Hello, my name's Samuel Keith Harris, and welcome back to another episode of The Damning Damage of Sexual Sin. Here we are in the fourth episode, and we're going to be talking about the will of God is your for your sexual purity. The will of God is your sexual purity. And if you haven't seen the other episodes, I suggest go back and watch the first three episodes that we touched on. We touched on an introduction to sexual immorality. We touched on are we struggling or willfully sinning. Then we touched on scriptures clearly against sexual immorality, which will come back to more um, scriptures on against sexual immorality in the last episode. But here we are in the fourth episode, and the will of God is your sexual purity. So many people are asking, what's the will of God for my life? Well, we're going to get into it because one of the things that's the will of God for your life from the Bible, from the scriptures, from the mouth of God, the inspired word of God, is God says, my will is that you be sexually pure. Interesting. So we'll talk about that. The book is The Damning Damage of Deception. Um, If you'd like a copy of that, I I have a few to give away. If you'd like one, just write in the comments that you'd like a free copy and I'll have to get your address and things like that. But I'd love to send you one or you can find it on Amazon in paperback or you can also get it on Kindle. So those resources are there and I'll put them down in the description. So let's go on. Let's see what the scripture has to say, what I wrote about. And we're going to start at the beginning here and we'll announce the title of this once again. The will of God is your sexual purity. Many people don't understand that it is God's will for them to be holy. If you are not holy and indulging in sexual sin proves that you are not holy, then you are out of the will of God completely as we see in this next verse. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3. God's will is for you to be holy, so stay away from all sexual sin. We are commanded to be holy. It is God who gives us this command, and this is the true Christian life. In this country, in America, which is where I live, in a lot of the churches, there's this downplaying that Christians are called to live holy lives. And you'll see that in a lot of these churches, sexual immorality runs rampant. Uh, I don't, I don't want to get into too many gory details, but even the younger people, and it's just running rampant throughout the church, and nobody's calling this stuff out as they should. There are voices in this nation calling out the sin that's going on in churches, but you'll, you'll see a lot of preachers condemning what's going on in the world. But let me say this. God is not telling you to call out the sin in the world until you clean up the church that you pastor, until you clean up the house of God. Where does judgment begin, with the world or with the house of God, according to the scriptures? The Bible says that judgment begins in the house of God. And so we need to get the, the church clean again, walking in purity again, before we ever call out the sin that is being paraded in the streets by the world. And so I'm, I'm, here, I'm not here to say we can't call out the sin in the world. I'm here to say let's do it with integrity because our own hearts are clean and pure. Let's not put on a front that we're holy if we're not holy and then call out the unholiness going on in the world. Let's cleanse the church. Let's see it be holy. And then we can call out the sin in the world because what Jesus say? He said, hey, you're, call, you're trying to remove the speck from your brother's eye when you have a log in your own. So stop calling out the homosexuality that's going on in the world if you have pornography in your heart, Christian. Christian, get your heart cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the word of God, before you ever call out the sin in somebody else or in the world. I'll see it. I'll see, I'll see people say, man, it's a shame with what's going on in the world. But my question is, is there lust in your heart? If there is, get it cleansed so you can actually bring the gospel to a dying world. If you're clean, you can go see others be made clean. If Christ has set you free, then you'll have a testimony to go set the captives free, to set the homosexual free, to set those who are in adultery free, to set those who are in lust and pornography free. But first, you have to be made free by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. So let's not call out the sin in other people until we get the sin removed out of our life. Amen? God's will is for you to be holy. So stay away. You know, I I heard somebody recently say that 
the Bible in the New Testament isn't about do's and don'ts. Well, the scripture here clearly tells us that to stay away from sexual sin, meaning don't indulge in it. Don't have anything to do with sexual sin because God's will is for you to be holy. So mean the, it means these two are at odds. Either you will be holy or your sexual sin will keep you from holiness. And it's not God's will that we be in sexual sin, which will go on. I'm getting, but the scripture does say a few verses down in that very chapter, it says God has not called us to impurity, but God has called us in holiness. We are called to be holy. The Lord says, be holy for I am holy, says the Lord. That's in the New Testament. And we're holy because Christ has made us positionally right with God and cleansed us and put himself in us. That's what makes us holy positionally. But then Christ living through us is the holiness flowing out from us, which proves we've been made holy. Because the scripture tells us, it says that righteous people will produce righteous deeds, but unrighteous people will produce unrighteous deeds. Whatever's in your heart is going to come through your life. So let's make sure we're cleansed by Christ. We are commanded to be holy. It is God who gives us this command. And this is the true Christian life. The false Christian life is a life of sin. You're not truly a Christian if you abide, you remain, you continually practice sin. And I can show you many scriptures on that. That's why I wrote this book, if you're really interested. I write, this holiness that God commands of his people includes an abstaining from sexual sin and abiding in the purity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. This holiness that God commands it's not a suggestion from the Lord that we be holy, that we live pure. He commands this of his people. Notice what it includes. It includes an abstaining from sexual sin and abiding in the purity of the Lord Jesus Christ. If Christ is pure and we're in Christ, then we're pure. Not just positionally, but he's made me pure to where I now live pure. That's how the gospel works. It cleans you from the inside and works its way to the outside in how I live. Then each of you will know how to control his own body and live in holiness and honor, not in lustful passion like the pagans who do not know God in his ways. Never harm or cheat a fellow believer in this matter by violating his wife. Look at this. This is written to Christians. Listen. For the Lord avenges all such sins as we have solemnly warned you. Paul did not write the book of Thessalonians to the world. He wrote the book of Thessalonians to the people of God. And he says, hey, just letting you know, we've solemnly warned you before that the Lord, he avenges these sins. If you cause a brother or a sister to stumble into sexual sin, if you are the one that is getting gratification out of somebody else and, and, and you're causing people to walk in sexual sin because of your life, the Lord avenges all these sins. Claim Christ all you want. Go to church all you want. Have as much fellowship at church as you want. Have all the Christian friends you want. Watch all the Christian sermons you want. If you're living in sexual sin, the Bible says the Lord will avenge all such sins. Well, Sam, uh, aren't I forgiven? Uh, aren't they under the blood? I'll tell you when sexual sin is under the blood and you can tell it's under the blood when it's been purged by the blood of Christ out of your heart and now you walk in the cleanness of your life in the Holy Spirit. If you're still in the same sexual sin you were in before you came to Christ, you don't know Christ according to the Bible. See, I'll tell you why people can't don't understand what true Christianity is is because we've sold them a cheap bill of goods. I'll tell you why people don't want Christianity is because we're th there will be a sexually immoral person who's a Christian that goes to work with other sexually immoral people and the, and the Christian will try to win them to Christ, but they're both in the same sins. Who wants your God? If you're in the same sexual sin as the, as the unbeliever and you're supposed to be the Christian, why on God's green earth would I want your God? You're doing the same things they are, but you're claiming you have a superior knowledge, but it ain't working out in your life. And so I'm here to expose that. That is not genuine Christianity. The Lord has not called us to that. We, it, I go on to say, do you see this? The Bible says that God will avenge these acts of sexual sin 
Does that not cause you to fear and to tremble? There is no place for sexual sin to be allowed in any of our lives, or you can be sure that you will be punished by the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't get a holy urgency in your spirit by the power of the Spirit of God, and you don't put these sexual sins to death, I'm here to tell you, you will abide under the wrath of God. The scriptures tell us that those that don't believe in the Son, they're under the wrath of God. But it also says this, those that don't obey the Son of God abide under the wrath of God. Jesus says, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. And he's speaking in the context of lust being adultery. Meaning, if I let my eyes go and I let them wander and then I engage and indulge in thinking about people for my sexual gratification, that is sin and that is damnable sin that will take me to hell if I don't put it to death. Jesus is the one that said it in Matthew chapter 5. And in Mark chapter 9, he he talks about the same thing. And he says that you'll go down into the unquenchable fires of hell where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. So people will say, Sam, you're being extreme. You shouldn't take it this seriously. Jesus is the one that said, if you don't put to death sexual sin, even in your eyes and in your heart, it will damn you for all of eternity. Jesus, Jesus who is the most kind man who ever lived, who's God in the flesh. You don't have to trust Sam. You have to trust Jesus. Sam's just telling you what Jesus said, and I'm not going to cower back from telling it to you. I'm not going to shrink back in shame from declaring the full counsel of God to you. And if you're in sin, if you're full of lust, I know people want to comment, oh, Sam, there's grace, there's grace, there's grace. There's grace to purge that devilish sexual sin out of your heart and out of your life. Praise God. So let's ask God to experience the grace of God to deliver us from these sins because God is the avenger of all, even believers in Christ, that continue in their sexual defilement. I'm telling you, this is a lot of Christian men, and women struggle with this too, but a lot of Christian men are in for a shock on the day of judgment because they did not take these commands of Christ seriously. Put to death sexual sin, or sexual sin will slit your throat. I'll probably get to these scriptures in the next episode, but if you go to the book of Numbers, sexual immorality caused 23,000 people of Israel to die in one day. And Paul says, hey, let that be an example for you who would continue in sexual sin that it caused 23,000 people to die. So we see that God is the avenger. And even in the New Testament, those that continue in sexual sin make themselves God's enemy. And God will slay the unrighteous Christian along with the unrighteous person of this world. It's only fair, is it not? Do you really think Christ died for us? That we could continue in the same sexual perversion that the world is in? How are we supposed to further the cause of Christ if we're indulging in the foul work of Satan? How are we supposed to bring the purity of Christ if we're walking in the impurity of the flesh and of the devil? This cannot be the way. And it is not the way. And I'm here to encourage you. You can walk in the purity of the Holy Spirit, not Four and a half years ago, was I bound in the same sexual sin as a lot of the people who might watch this video. But I'm completely free and clean by the blood of Christ. I've done nothing great. I've only kept my eyes on the Lord and sought the Lord. And it gives me this holy fire and anger because people will say, well, Sam, it's just too hard. Turn your TV off and seek God. Turn the sports off and seek God. Run away from temptation. Run away from that relationship. And seek God and see if he does not clean your heart, purify your mind, give you a new heart, a heart of flesh that's tender and responsive to the command of scripture to be pure and holy before God. God wants this for you. Do you want this for you? Now let's look at 1 Thessalonians 4, 7. God has called us to live holy lives 
not impure lives. Notice how Paul does not tell us how weak we are as a qualifier to take the sting out of this verse like many false teachers do. I just read to you the scripture. It says we're called to be holy. We're not called to live in pure lives. Notice how Paul didn't say, but, 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 I'm going to backtrack. I understand some of you are really weak. Some of you are really going through it. Some of you, you just can't escape that lust, but God's there with you in the middle of it. I'm not here to tell you that. I'm here to tell you, you need a holy urgency in your heart or you will die because of this sexual sin. Notice how it sucked your desire for the Lord away. Notice how you have no desire to pray, no desire to fast, no desire to seek God, no desire to read the scriptures because sexual sin has plagued your life. Notice that. That's Satan seducing you. And we see in the churches in Revelation, sexual immorality was often there when the believers were being seduced. And you probably don't think you're being seduced. You probably think you're on fire for the Lord and you're not. There's no revelation coming to you from this scripture. There's no desire to win the lost. There's no prayer. There's no urgency to, to, to go tell people about Christ because you're caught up in sin. Notice how Paul does not tell us how weak we are as a qualifier to take the sting out of this verse like many false teachers do. That is because Paul is fully aware that if God has called us to live holy lives, then God will empower us to live that lifestyle. Don't let anyone deceive you into thinking that it is okay to live an impure life. I'm telling you, don't let anyone deceive you into thinking. I don't care if they're a preacher. I don't care if they call themselves a prophet. I don't care if they're a so-called pastor. If they do not have an urgency towards the people to kill sin and to live pure and to live holy, don't let them deceive you. They're deceived themselves. Don't let them deceive you. Paul's aware that if God called us to live a holy life, and you should be aware of this too, if God called you to live a holy life, sent Jesus Christ to the cross to be crucified, to die, to be resurrected, to ascend to the right hand of the Father so he could send the Spirit of God into men's hearts. If God did all that, don't you think he has the power to enable you to live a holy life? Praise the Lamb of God. You need this holy urgency today. Kill sexual sin or sexual sin will seduce you and strip you of all of your, the spiritual ground you've gained in God. You'll lose it all. And by the way, what good is it if you're telling people about Christ and you're living bound in the same sin? The only thing that's going to come out of that is you, you having Christian Pornography Anonymous where you go tell somebody else about your struggle and they tell you about their struggle. I'm not opposed to helping people out of their struggle. I'm opposed to thinking everybody has to struggle. Everybody does not have to struggle. The power of the Holy Spirit of God will crush the head of Satan in your heart and in your life and give you a pure heart that doesn't even long for sexual impurity, but longs for the purity of God, longs for the holiness of God, longs to see other people experience the purity and holiness of God. That is the desire that will be replaced when that old filthy desire for lust is ripped out of your heart by God Almighty through Jesus Christ. Amen? Praise God. I love you. I, I want you to walk in the freedom of the Holy Spirit that Christ paid for. Now moving on, Paul, Paul states something powerful. He says, therefore, all right, so you're thinking, Sam, you're a nut. You're crazy. Look at this. Therefore, anyone who refuses to live by these rules is not disobeying human teaching. So it's not saying, oh, you're not rejecting Sam. You're, you're not rejecting something Sam told you or is suggesting to you or is saying will work for you. This isn't my idea. But look, it says you're not rejecting or disobeying human teaching. You are rejecting God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. So what is the culmination of the point? God is giving you his Holy Spirit and you're rejecting the power of his spirit to cleanse you of that lust. Why? Because it brings you comfort, because you like this lifestyle, because you enjoy lusting, because your heart is filthy. If you're living like a devil, you'll be punished in hell like a devil. But Christ wants to cleanse you and make you like him. 
He wants to conform you into his image by the spirit of the Lord. But if you reject this message of Christ cleansing you from a filthy heart that's filled with sexual sin, because Jesus said in Matthew chapter 15, what did he say? He said, sexual immorality comes out of the heart. People who are in sexual sin will say, well, you just don't know my heart. Yes, I do. Because Christ said, whatever's in the treasury of your heart is going to come out of your life. And if you're engaging in sexual sin and you have no urgency to get rid of it, you have been deceived by Satan. If you reject this teaching, you're not rejecting man, you're rejecting God. Paul tells us here that if someone disobeys and refuses to live holy in this area against sexual sin, then they are not just disobeying a human, but they are actually rejecting God. So my counsel to you is, if you're in sexual impurity, don't reject the command of God to live holy. Ask him for grace to empower you to live holy. Because you're not rejecting me when you reject the message of sexual purity. You're rejecting God himself who sent Christ to shed his blood for you to be made pure. And God gives his Holy Spirit to you. Don't reject him and reject the very spirit that's there to aid you and to help you walk in righteousness. It says, I wrote, if you don't like holiness preaching, your issue is with God, not with the holiness preacher. So your issue is not with me if you don't like this. Your issue is with God. Now, if you want to take the blow, if you want to say things to me, go ahead. But you're really saying things against God. If you reject God's command for sexual purity in the life of a Christian, then you are rejecting God himself and denying him as Lord of your life. It, let me say that again. If you reject God's command for sexual purity in the life of a Christian, you are rejecting God himself and denying him as Lord of your life. What does Lord mean? It means Lord Jesus is the governing factor of my life. He's my Lord. He's the governor of my life. If he says no sexual uh, filth, no sexual filth should be in my life. He set up his rule in my heart. And people love to point out the faults in other people, but I'll tell you what the real issue is. Your heart that's not cleansed. Your heart that's not walking in the freedom of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Now look at this, Titus 1.16. These people profess to know God. So that might be you. You might be in sexual impurity saying, but Sam, I know God, I know I do. I know I, I'm assured of my salvation. I know I know Jesus. They profess to know God, but by their deeds, they deny God. Being detestable, being disobedient, and being worthless for any good deed. Detestable, meaning you're in the stain of sin and you continue in the stain of sin. Disobedient, you're not obeying the command of Christ to live a righteous and holy life and worthless for any good deed. Because you're overcome with sexual impurity and be, it sapped your strength to even want to serve the Lord and do good unto the Lord and do good works to glorify the Lord. So when you abide in sexual impurity, it is destroying your life and it is but separating you and the Lord. So let the Lord cleanse that out of your life. There is hope today. The hope is in your freedom in Christ. So let me pray for you. Father, I pray for anybody who is struggling with sexual sin. It is time for them to be free. I pray that you would ignite a holy fire in their heart that would deliver them from the chains of sin. But not only that, if they have no desire to go forward in you and to read your word and to abide in the freedom of the Holy Spirit by the power of the word of God, there's nothing we can do for them. I pray that you'd set them free and set them on the pursuit of God and that from this day they'd notice a change in their life, that now they're walking in the freedom of the Holy Spirit because Christ has set them free. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed, not bound still. So set the captive free, Lord Jesus Christ, and set them on fire for your glory. It's in Jesus' precious name that I pray and everybody said amen. Well, people will be like, Sam, well, isn't there a, you know, a nice side to God and all this other stuff? Guys, I have over 2,000 videos you can watch. They teach on many different topics. I have to highlight this topic because many are bound in this sin right now, and if they're not free, the other teachings will do them no good. They don't even have a desire to read the Bible. So people need to understand this is killing them because it was killing me, and that's why I'm telling you this testimony. But yeah, if you want my book, The Damning Damage of Deception, An Urgent Call to Biblical Truth, 
My name is Samuel Keith Harris. You can find that on Amazon in paperback or on Kindle. If you'd like a free one, I'll do my best to get you one. Just write in the comments that you want one. All right. So I love you and I'll see you next time.